Welcome. It's uh, June 16th, 2012, Father's Day weekend, and happy Father's Day to all our listeners out there, yeah. and uh, happy belated birthday to my co-host. Thank you, sir. Uh, you're, wa- wa- you're watching and listening to the Nerd Stalker Tech Week podcast number 32, which I'm the only one that keeps track. Wow. I'm Greg Valeria, a.k.a. Social Greg, on Twitter, and you are? I am Adolfo Ferrand, uh, at Nerd Stalker on Twitter. Thank you for the birthday wishes, everyone. I'm sure you're all thinking of uh, my birthday right now, and uh, no, <laughs> and happy Father's Day Many to presents. Everyone. Set presents. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, speaking of my birthday, man, if, if it's something that makes me happy, it's new Apple stuff. And uh, we've got a big, big uh, conference going on, Greg. What's the story here? Well, I think, you know, they announced, uh, you know, at WWDC, you know, the first story comes from uh, Scott Stein of CNET. He was saying, what did we miss uh, from the announcements this week? So Ooh. I took another take at this because, uh, you know, uh, you got the iOS 6 this week. You got the Retina display on the new MacBook Pros. Mm -hmm. You even got more RAM on that standard MacBook Air. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, let's talk about what are the rumors that didn't happen. Uh, So they were talking about 4G on the MacBook and I thought that was kind of a ridiculous thing because, you know, you you have the iPad, right? Mm -hmm. So I thought that was kind of funny, but he he mentioned that that was missed. Uh, No new iMacs or Mac Minis. Mm, Probably because there's no Apple TV. Yeah, yeah. I was about <laughs> so, to say. More importantly, no new Apple TV, right? Yeah. No, and you know they were, and he, this guy was even looking for HD TV hardware. Well, there's no Apple TV. You're not going to get that. Yeah, no, um, I don't think so. You know, what about the new iPhone? You know, I thought, nah, I think they're going to wait another wh- a little while, right? Well, yeah. What do you think about that? Yeah, I heard that that was supposed to be released in October. Is it, you know why? Why? Uh, you know, give up all the goods in one go. You know, they have the October announcement or whatever, the later announcement, right? So uh, right. there's rumors right. as to, I mean, that's it's got to be a new iPhone. Uh, whether they announce the new, whatever, new Apple television, whatever that is, whether it's an operating system only, you know, platform, mm. like a, or mm. I'm sorry, a TV platform or uh, an actual platform physical piece of hardware, which I would really be shocked to see. Um, there's no need for them to really spill all the beans at WWDC, you know. Yeah, and, and you know, he was also looking for an overhaul of the iTunes App Store to find the apps a little better, which I agree with. But yeah. whether you announce that at WWDC or as a separate announcement, I, I don't know if it's really a WWDC-ish type mm-hmm. thing, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I, well, what did you think about some of the announcements? So like like what I just said earlier, was it was it a, was it a good WWDC? Oh, phone yeah, yeah. Phone? I thought, you know, the biggest announcement, this sort of goes into my um, a later story that I got here is uh, – the, mm-hmm. the announcement of their own maps. I mean, that is probably the biggest, oh, that's true. biggest announcement that's true. ever and how uh, uh, detrimental that is to, to Google. I mean, Google's stock went down something like 6% after that announcement, right? I mean, it's massive. Yeah, that's massive. Right. And their tight integration with uh, Facebook now, uh, it's, uh, you know, and, and Siri improvements, and people are talking that that's going to yes. actually infringe yes. also, uh, yes. or in, also in uh, Google search, <laughs> you know, you know, yeah, infringe, yeah. Uh, encroach yeah. on their on that business, right? So it's going to cut away. Right. So right. Uh, Google, right. oddly enough, seems vulnerable right now, you know, ever so slightly. Yeah, I, I think so. Well, let's talk about another vulnerability, Nokia. Ah. So what's the next story like? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, analysts expect uh, this This uh, story from Boy Junior Support. A lot of my stories will be coming from there today. Uh, analysts expect Nokia to keep tanking. So uh, uh, thanks, Bre- uh, Brad Reed, for this story. Yeah, so for anyone who, who thinks that Nokia has already hit bottom, uh, be warned, things may get even worse uh, before they get better. So Reuters, according to Reuters and Business Week on Friday morning, they both ran the same choice quotes from uh, financial analysts and VCs warning that Nokia's turmoil is only just the beginning. Uh, they were actually just graded junk by an analyst, too. D- d- downgraded to oh, junk wow. status. Um, <clears throat> not good. Okay. Um, so among the highlights are, not good, <laughs> are UBS, and uh, we said Nokia would have, quote, to significantly discount its new Microsoft Lumia products in Eesh. order to gain any traction Eesh. with retailers, operators, Ouch. and consumers. Uh, Canaccord Genuity, Ouch. which projected a continued sharp decline in Symbian smartphone sales, duh, combined with a slow ramp in uh, Windows smartphone volume. And uh, another analyst at Lieberman Capital who said that Nokia had too much baggage in terms of cost structure and legacy operating systems to be attractive to most buyers. And Charlie Wolf, an analyst at Needham Company, uh, who uh, said that if Nokia doesn't come out of its funk within a year, Nokia is going to be finished. And that Microsoft Microsoft was the only serious 
potential buyer. Nokia, Nokia, Nokia recently trimmed guidance uh, for the current uh, quarter when it announced that it would lay off 10,000 additional workers by the end of 2013. So not good. Right. And, and the, the weird uh, sort no. of the implications of spill off too is this negative press for uh, Microsoft, right? Yeah. No, I, I mean, that's the horse that's been touting uh, Windows Phone, right? Yeah. So yeah. that that horse is limping really badly yeah, now, yeah. I think. Not, huh? not, good, not good for Microsoft. Obviously, Nokia is in some serious trouble. So, Greg, how about, uh, uh, speaking of trouble, <laughs> cyber attacks. What's going on here? <laughs> Well, this next story comes uh, about cyber, from uh, you know the Iran cyber, cyber attacks that actually has happened over the last two to three weeks, right? People talking about that. This this story comes from Peter Foster from the Washington Bureau of the Telegraph, and uh, it says that you know Russian cybersecurity experts have found uh, concrete evidence linking the two computer worms stuck, Stuxnet and um, Flame. Uh, you know the Russian agency, uh, the Russian Kapersky Lab. Uh, he, you know. Confirming the scale of West's ongoing uh, cyber warfare program and warning that the U.S. and Western critical infrastructure is now increasingly vulnerable to revenge attacks. Isn't that interesting? Um, so, you know, they talk about the next Pearl Harbor could be online, they say, you know, and, and you know, it's just interesting that, um, you know, if anyone was, uh, you know, uh, you know, fell asleep for the last six, eight weeks or, you know, we're on the rock for six, eight weeks, you know, the um, the we 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 did a a, a full scale attack, yeah. a cyber attack as they call it, yeah. you know, on Iran, right? right? And, and and this was a while ago. Yeah, a while yeah. ago. A while or, ago. It's just these details are yeah, just coming to light mean, the now. Original. Yeah, this Tuxnex yeah, attack. Yeah, exactly. Right, right. Yeah, I, I, and you, you you know you were talking to me about this online. What, you know, what is your kind of you know, it was kind of a war on Iran's main nuclear yeah. facilities, right? It's, it's yeah, uh, computer systems yeah, like that. Yeah, I mean, lit- literally was. Um, yeah, so we did develop. I, I believe is the details are coming out uh, that, uh, it, and I thought it's been announced. Uh, Stuxnet was developed by the U.S. You know, in a sort of cyber warfare military effort, which was originated during the George W. Bush Jr. Uh, term, actually. And uh, there were two programs uh, at the end of his term that he told Obama not to cut of any that must stay and. There was this program, the Stuxnet program, and then, of course, there was the drone program, right, which is uh, everyone knows about. They've seen these drones flying around and bombing uh, different areas. Um, <clears throat> that's how important uh, this this Stuxnet sort of program was. I forget the code name for it. Uh, but what happened with that, with that program was that it was actually very effective in that um, – it was mm. placed within the Iran nuclear uh, facility, which is totally sandboxed and siloed off from the Internet. Someone, someone had to actually physically get into that, slap a USB into one of their machines, and then it does its work, right? And what it did is it, it actually destroyed uh, the, the nuclear, Iran nuclear program for what they're estimating is like about, uh, I don't know, it was like two, two, three years worth of work or something completely stopped them. Um, so what it was doing originally Whoa. was like slowly doing some errors and then... Uh, um, slowing things down, d- speeding up turbines to, uh, you know, points to where it would li- literally, like, explode kind of thing uh, and destroy the facility. And, and it was all the Iranians didn't know. They thought it was their misengineering and they, they were doing something wrong. They had no idea. You know, that, that was the brilliance of this uh, this uh, this virus oh, or type of thing. Uh, oh. But unfortunately, this uh, wh- whoever it was that had it on their USB device also put it in a uh, laptop that was connected to the Internet. And uh, what uh, Stuxnet saw the internet as being uh, the enemy. So it started attacking, and so it got loose, and everyone was like, oh, this is just some hackers or something like that. No, what it was is it was a military weapon that it got out in the public and just did its thing. And so all these details are coming to light now because of that. And be- and now the question becomes, you know, um, with nuclear you know, uh, capabilities and weapons, we keep them sort of as a deterrent, right? Uh, Russia has a bunch in, in, right. in the Cold War, right? And we had a bunch and we knew that it was sort of mutual assured destruction type of thing. Uh, with this kind of thing, uh, there are no rules set yet, right? So um, there's a lot of questions and rules that need to be set, obviously, okay. uh, guidelines for this kind of thing. Yes. Uh, yes. But it's much harder. I mean, yes. we can track a rocket coming to the U.S., you know, from from its originating place with a virus, right. it could be months, if not years, or, or something before we can even track that back, if at all, right, yeah. back in any uh, kind of way. So it's, this is a, a very oh. interesting story. 
Yeah, and I think we've talked on the podcast from last year that you know the, you know China was getting into act yeah. of of cyber right, right. warfare, so right. yeah, everyone's getting yeah, into it, yeah, right? Yeah. So and and it's true, our, it's our grid system like and everything is definitely probably. I think it was ranked as the most vulnerable in the world or something like that. So yeah, um, right. it wouldn't surprise me if something like that happened. Oh. Oh boy, what what problems? But you know, it looks like uh, you know the next story. Google Plus has some uh, game problems. Yeah, huh? more importantly, games. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> screw uh, screw uh, American <laughs> defense. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, so Google makers already are <laughs> pulling the titles from uh, Google Plus. Speaking of train wreck here, uh, Boy Genius report, reports again. Thank you, Zach Epstein. Uh, Google recently announced that it would add a gaming element to its Google Plus social yeah. network. Again, following in uh, Facebook's footsteps. Uh, the move was seen as a direct effort to increase engagement by keeping users on the Google Plus platform uh, for as long as possible. Google's gaming efforts suffered a serious major setback this week, however, uh, at the time of this writing. However, as uh, at least two game makers uh, had begun pulling games and titles from the site, the Wall Street Journal reports EA-owned PopCap pulled multiple game listings, including a version of its popular Bejeweled franchise and the Germany-based uh, wow. Wooga pulled uh, three titles as well. Uh, Google's Facebook competitors tout impressive user growth, but a recent study suggests that Google Plus is nothing more than a ghost town with very little user engagement, right. which I tend to agree right. with. Uh, are you a big Google Plus user, Greg? Mm. No. You know, I throw some of our titles up to my Google Plus once in a while yeah. and some of our podcasts, yeah. but, you know, I don't get a lot more... I don't get a lot of interaction. Facebook is a better interactive tool for that or a social tool for that. I, I, you know, I just throw it up there just maybe to just bolster my cloud score. I don't know <laughs> what I do, why I do it, but, but um, no, I, I, I don't really use Google Plus. And you know, I think we were about to put another story that Samsung was coming up with their social network, and I was kind of thinking about, hey, you know. You know, are they just going to meet the similar fate as Google Plus if another yeah. big social network comes online, you know? Right, right. Um, I think Pinterest was different enough that, you know, they became, you know, pretty powerful and interesting, but, you know. Well, I guess we can't write them off till they're totally gone, different. but it's, you know, no one's using it much Ooh. anymore. No, except, uh, what's his face? <laughs> That's pretty no. good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, uh, so how about China, yeah, man? So. China strives to create its own Silicon Valley. This sounds familiar. Well, you know... <laughs> yeah, well, I think everyone's trying to, yeah. uh, to you know yeah. recreate the Silicon Valley, even with the United States. Yeah. I think yeah. <laughs> so. So um, you know, I was at the Asian uh, we uh, Asian Tech uh, Night uh, this week, and um, a lot of people were talking about this. But this story comes from John Bordeaux from the San Jose Mercury News. You know, uh, saying that you know with China becoming powerful, um, you know, they have also been kind of touted as the Me Too. Uh, companies of the world, right? You know, start as a copy, but actually make things better than the West. Uh, if you look at a lot of the things that they've created of their Twitter-like networks, Cibu, Sino Weibo, and uh, a couple of other things that are Facebook-like, yeah. you know, they've actually improved it. And so uh, I think what's happening is that a lot of these companies are coming, or countries are coming to the United States to learn as much about this kind of you know, drink the Silicon Valley water if you want to case or SF Tech water, yeah. right? And then hopefully, you know, the you know with the whole the Grail, osmosis, they could go yes. back and then yes, mm -hmm. yes. But you know, there's 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 two sides. You know, I think I hear a lot out there that you know, can you really recreate Silicon Valley? And the and the answer to many people say no. But I think um, uh, Thomas Lowe, uh, who was the co-organizer of Asian Tech Night, kind of said that, hey, you know. There's a lot to learn here, and with that that learning, they, people could go back and not necessarily create the same Silicon Valley, but recreate elements that really make this area really really work, you know. And and the idea is not to just copy verbatim what we're doing here in Silicon Valley, but take elements that help entrepreneurship, heart, help startups, you know, help you know bring up these massive companies like like facebook and 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 twitter and you know all the rest you know and google you know apple into the, into foreign countries like china now the the other side you know where i've been part of it on the high tech side is do we want a lot of learning to go back to china mm -hmm. and that's the counterpoint right. to right. it all right is saying you know, they're still an enemy of the United States. So do, shouldn't we monitor some of this Chinese activity? You know, we're treating China like they're any other country, almost like what this one guy was saying. And so maybe we need to monitor them. Maybe we need to really monitor how much technology traffic is going back to China through these people. You know, stuff like that. I, I don't know what your take is, but, you know, that's that's kind of what I'm hearing out there on the streets as well. Mm -hmm. 
I, I don't know. I don't know how to respond to these type of stories because I've heard so many of them, you know, from every, like you said, uh, yeah. different cities without, within the U.S. itself, they're, you know, are trying to do the same thing. You know, I hear the story over and over. Uh, every single country, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. Uh, is doing this. I know China has a vibrant tech scene and that's a general, you know, a generalization also because that's a massive continent unto itself, right? Or a na- country, yeah, you know, right. within it, um, they're, they're, I'm sure there's pockets of, of tech uh, uh, flourishing mm. and and. And not in different ways, you know, versus a startup scene versus like tech manufacturing or whatever. Um, then you All have right. countries like Israel, who was profiled on 60 Minutes recently, who have a vibrant tech community. Uh, areas in, in right. uh, Manhattan, actually, in New York, that which has a, a vibrant tech community kind of thing. But um, I, I, I don't know. I think this... Um, this whole even regional type of concept of uh, this whole be- sil- becoming like Silicon Valley to me is sort of like misguided because we're uh, so many startups here are already uh, international and that their yeah. developers are in, in Bulgaria or Russia or, and then their project management team is in like Singapore and then their you know what I mean? Their VC <laughs> right. happens to be in the Valley and maybe they have some uh, board right. of directors that comes in or virtually, you know, so it's already these virtual companies right. in a way everywhere. So I, I don't know. Man, mm. you know, but but I do see, uh, uh, I don't know, some some a definite benefit to to somewhere like the valley because there's nowhere like it, man. It's just it's a weird organic no. thing, and uh, that that just has sort yeah. of happened. But you know, and, and you know, we're part of it, so it's 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 even when people ask me like from Japan, you know, what do you think of the valley, and, and it's kind of like. You know, why is the sky is blue? It just yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's how I kind of respond yeah. to people, you yeah. know. I mean, you and I have been part of this fabric for a long yeah, time, yeah, right? right? I mean, probably longer than we want to yeah. admit, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but but I, I you know, it's just it just is, you know, and I and it's hard to describe, hard to explain to people, I think for me, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, Fragmentation Fighters brings Apple's 3D Maps navigation to iPhone 4. Wow, so again, thank you so to cool. Zach Epstein from Boy Genius Report. So uh, yeah, touching on on Greg's story at WWDC, that kind of thing. You know, as we mentioned, one of the one of the amazing stories was this uh, 3D Maps uh, technology that Apple has announced. Uh, but the the catch with uh, that technology is that it won't run on older iPhones. Is what I'm hearing. Like the iPhone oh. 4, for instance. Luckily for you, there are some. Su- Super smart programmers in Russia who have ported this thing to the iPhone 4 already. And they have a working video at Boy Genius Report. You guys can check it out. Yeah, so... um so what they're nice. saying is there are two sides of fragmentation. While Apple's iOS 6 software doesn't necessarily have big negative implications for developers, users with older devices are missing out on some of the great features of iOS 6. Uh, so uh, the developer community, yep, look what they did. It's all for you. Apple's new 3D mapping feature and navigation on their phones. A simplified solution will undoubtedly emerge from the coming months, but savvy users who just can't wait can follow follow uh, the instructions on, at Boy Genius Reports. You know, for the bigger story in the videos, uh, a pair of videos wow. showing 3D maps running on an iPhone 4 uh, fo- follow there on the video. So check it out. Some super cool stuff that people are doing already. Smart, smarty, smarty. So what does this mean to... What does this mean to Google Maps? I mean, no, they announced, you know, they announced their new Google Maps the week <laughs> yeah, before, right. but it, it just didn't, it paled in yeah. comparison. Yeah, they said, like. well, we got it coming kind of thing. You know, they, what they were doing is trying to take some of the, yeah. the uh, thunder away from, from Apple's announcement that they knew, yeah. you know, this was right. coming. Uh, in. Yeah, did. so there's a question also, is this we part know. of the whole uh, going thermonuclear war type of Steve Jobs uh, promise against Google, you know, which this is this is a yeah. big, big freaking deal. I don't think, I mean, the, the next thing, as we mentioned before, if if, if they announce some sort of search, you know, even though Siri is quietly doing that, that's going to be some serious uh, competition there for for Google. I, know. I love it. I love I it too. I just man. love it. Yeah. Bring bring it on, it speaking on. of bringing it on, bring, bring it on, on the speed round. <laughs> speed round. Speed round. Okay, you're real yes, man. So uh, Google also uh, Google Google Google. <laughs> I do love uh, Google developers, and Google Development Blog announces a better web <laughs> templating uh, uh, experience with Angular JavaScript. What's so great about Angular JS is that uh, it lets you write web applications as if you've had a smarter browser. It lets you extend HTML syntax mm. to express your application's components clearly and succinctly, and lets you use nice. standard HTML as your template language, which is awesome. 
And it automatically nice. synchronizes data from your UI view with your JavaScript objects, uh, uh, your model through two-way data binding. We're seeing a lot of uh, data binding type of JavaScript options and frameworks. Uh, so knockout.js is one that I know a lot of uh, uh, Silverlight type of developers do with uh, MVVM type of uh, technology. Another one is uh, Backbone and uh, is another really big popular right. one. So this allows you to do things like unobtrusive data binding, HTML as a template, reusable components in HTML, views and routes, and some good and testability stuff. And this thing's only going to improve, and, and it's coming from Google. So, um, if you you know if you know HTML really well, and you know some basic JavaScript, uh, take a look at this. It's it's a very interesting technology. Uh, Angular JS uh, 1.0. Give it a Google. Wow, nice, nice, great speed round. Let's do mine now. Okay, I, I saw an uh, article from CNET. Uh, Philip Wong, thank you for that. Uh, connect to serve ads based on your emotion. So I thought that was kind of cool. You know, I, I, Microsoft recently fil uh, filed a patent, um, which might just change the marketing landscape, they say. So um, the uh, underlying idea is to serve targeted ads based on users' emotions through Connect. You know, facial expressions, body language, so on and so forth uh, through the Connect sensor. So wow. I thought that was kind of cool. You guys should read about it, um, you know, and think about, you know, you know, just think about what, you know, what your thoughts are on that. And, you know, is that an acceptable trade-off for free to play games? I don't know. Crappy, expensive internet and inefficient <laughs> laptop plugs top business travelers hotel annoyances list. Thank you, Boing Boing and Corey Doctorow, for this story. Yeah, so the annual Flyer nice. Talk survey of frequent business travelers' uh, greatest hotel annoyances found that the top three peeves are all related to network access, expensive internet, inaccessible, inadequate electrical outlets, and slow internet topped the list in position number yeah. one, two, and three. As one traveler put it, quote, if I can't get free Wi-Fi at Starbucks where I'm buying a $4 <laughs> cup of coffee, why can't I get uh, free Wi-Fi at a hotel where I'm paying $250 a night? Right? Ouch. Ouch. Okay, we got uh, Skype improves, uh, has a new release. It improves contact lists, video calls, and uh, on all the desktop platforms. So Windows, you, you got it a little bit easier to navigate your contact list. Uh, Mac, you, you find a very easily your contact window, a little bit sim uh, slimmer, easier to reposition on the Skype window. And, and Linux, you know, uh, you don't see a lot of ton of new features, but, you know, you should find an interface that looks better and mo that both video and audio quality and, you know, I think that's just cool. awesome. So, so I think uh, you know, look that up. Uh, you, you got the benefit this week, all you Skype users, and I'm a Skype user, so Excellent. I got the benefit. So, all right, Excellent. so um, Opera gets so a yeah. major makeover with beautiful themes, web uh, webcam apps, better nice. security, and more. So, thank you, uh, Life Hacker Manella Panola. Uh, Opera 12, as many of you may or may not heard, have uh, was released and offers a lot more eye candy and extra fun, as well as useful tweaks. You can now apply a one of a hundred themes to customize the look of the browser, and surf in confidence, knowing that that even if a plugin crashes, Opera won't. Uh, the themes work just the way they do in Chrome and Firefox browsers. Opera 12 has beefed up its security features as well, so it's easier to tell if you're doing uh, if you're at a bad site or something like that, or someone's uh, taking care of uh, exploiting your privacy policy type of stuff. Uh, lots of other extras come with the upgrade, including running plugins in a separate process, faster page loading and rendering, 64-bit Windows and Mac support, and support from multiple languages. Uh, if Opera 12 is still not fast mm. enough for you, even though Opera versus 11.6 won a bunch of speed tests in their tests, uh, you can try experiment mental hardware acceleration as well so uh give it a go go yeah, check nice. out opera opera dot uh, something all right nice speed round man nice speed round that was cool tip right. tip time so uh tip time greg what's tip your tip time. okay social social greg's tip of the week uh, share your wi-fi with strangers to earn free bandwidth uh, no contract so alice chan of PS psfk thank you very much uh, you know kind of announced a new service that's going to be coming out at the end of the year karma is a new service that allows users to pay for and share wi-fi anywhere so the plan works like this users log on to their karma wi-fi spot and as uh, for a pay as you go for fee of like 14 bucks per gigabyte of data and each person around them who jumps onto their Wi-Fi network, uh, you earn another 100 megabytes That's of cool. free data. So it's kind of a cool network networking type thing that they're creating a kind of a you know social network for wi-fi i thought it was kind of cool um it'll be out by the end of the year they say and i think it's i think awesome, why not man. you know so 
Yeah, yeah so my tip is called diff PDF. It finds differences differences between PDF files. Uh, I don't know. This is a Windows oh, and OS gosh, uh, so OS 10 uh, download as well. Uh, Compare two different versions of a PDF file. It can be a nightmare thanks to uh, Lifehacker again, Shep McAllister. Uh, the open source diff PDF automates the process, finding differences in both text and appearance. All you need to do is uh, feed the application two different PDF files, specify whether you want to compare appearance, individual characters, or whole words, and let it run. A few minutes later, Later, side by side, you get this. Uh, we'll highlight any discrepancies in red. This is a obvious. Uh, this is obviously a fringe use case application, but it's a huge time saver in the right application. I know in a lot of my work situations, I need to do a lot of PDF comparisons. You know, for larger companies and things like that. So, uh, really cool thing uh, for for you know those niche cases, like he says. Right. Nice. 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 Great tip. Great tip, man. That's great. Right on. So, what do we got coming up, brother? <laughs> all the PDFs that I have. SF New Tech. Uh, we got SF New Tech on June 20th, uh, live uh, at Mighty, 119 Utah Street, San Francisco, California. Well, one of the top billers there is yeah. gonna be Reddit. Um, you know, Eric Martin, Gerald Manager is going to be, you, you know, which is Reddit is called yeah. the front page of yeah. the internet, as they say. Uh, Two billion page views a month. Jeez, I'm super excited incredible. to see Waze. And, you know, um, Waze is going to be their crowd flower, factoid games, yeah. iBroadcast TV, dot TV, Zero One, and more. Oh, that's the Waze. Cool, yeah. too. Love Waze. Yeah, yeah, yeah. iBroadcast was just uh, streaming next to me the last one on June 6th. So um, Sam's going to be there, and uh, we did a great interview cool. with them. So I plan to do some nice. talking interviews there June too, as well. So, yes, June 20th. So anyway, how do they um, how do they get a hold? Oh, of Oh, you can uh, get a hold of me at Nerdstalker on Twitter. I am Adolfo Ferranda, Adolfo at Nerdstalker.com If you want to email me, how about you, Greg? Yeah, um, uh, you can get me on get me on Twitter at uh, Social Greg, uh, right. right above there, or you can reach me on email at uh, Social Greg at Nerdstalker.com And I want to, I want to give a shout out to one of my friends who are launching a new app in Japan. Say, hang in there. She. She's going through what I call the, the 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 launch pains by working about almost 24 hours a day on this launch. But uh, hey, Aya, hang in there. You guys will launch it in very Japan. Cool, it'll man. be fine. So anyway, all right, everyone. Yeah, very well, thanks cool. again. Anyway, have a good week. Hey, happy yeah, happy Father's Day, man. Yeah, happy Father's Day. Yeah, we'll catch you later. Hey, be careful out there.